You see, the only prophecy made directly by Jesus Christ about what was going to happen. And in that, he gave the example of Jonah. You see, it's funny in nature of man that when a man of God comes along to save mankind from, from perdition, mankind has a tendency to put obstacles in their way. They want that man of God to show them a sign, some miracle, some circus tricks. Do something, man, that which I can't do, then I think I'll give you credit that maybe you are a man of God. That is the sickness of man. Instead of listening to the man, what the man is telling you, whether it's good or bad, no, 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 no. I want you to perform some tricks. Can you stand on your head? Hmm? Can you stand on your head? Can you put your legs in the air? What? Can you stand on one hand? No, no, this is what mankind is looking from this man of God. So we find the sickness, it's common in the Holy Bible, in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of St. Matthews, we read that when Jesus Christ claimed that he was the Messiah, the anointed one, translated Christ, the Jews were not satisfied with this bona fide. So they came to him. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, 40. They come to him and they say, Master, to me sarcastic. They were sarcastic. They didn't mean it. Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi, Molana, Sheikh. This is what they said. We would have a sign of thee. We want you to show us a miracle to convince us that you are the genuine man of God. This was uncalled for. So Jesus reacts very strongly, very strongly. He said, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it. An evil and adulterous generation. In modern language, I don't use modern terminology for that. You can think as you like. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man, meaning himself, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. The only sign, the only miracle I'm giving you about my bona fide is the sign of Jonah. The miracle of Jonah is my miracle. I'm asking the question, when they threw Jonah into the sea, was he dead or was he alive? Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I know sometimes when if you said he was not alive and make you to change, it would have been difficult. So I would have said, if you, before you answered it, I, I said, look, I want to make things easy for you to get the right answer. Because once you get the wrong answer, I have to move heaven and earth to make you to change the position. You know, to convince you that you were wrong. So, I would have made things easy for you to get the right answer by telling you that, look, Jonah volunteered. He volunteered. He says, throw me. And a man who volunteers, you don't have to strangle him before throwing. You don't have to break his arm or limb before throwing. No, no, no. The man volunteers. He says, throw me. Why are you going to kill him? Why are you going to break his jaw? Nothing. So then I would have asked you, was he dead or was he alive? And unanimous, 100% you would have shouted, alive! Because I said, look, the man volunteered. One who volunteers, you don't, you don't have to maltreat him. Do you? He said, no. So he was alive. Right answer. Right answer. Any child would have answered that. The fish comes and gobbles him. Dead or alive? Alive! Let me hear again from you all. Alive. Yes, yes. From the fish's belly, he prays to God for help. Do dead people pray? Do dead people plead with God? Do they? No. So what was he? Dead or alive? Alive. He's alive. He's alive. alive. On the third day, the fish vomits him on the seashore. Dead or alive? Alive. And it is the, the mightiest miracle in the whole Bible. This is the mightiest miracle of all. 
in the Bible. This is a miracle three times over. You see, when you throw a man into a raging sea, he ought to drown. He ought to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. A fish comes and gobbles the man. A fish is not a respecter of person. He says, you know, you are Jonah. You are a prophet of God. <laughs> gently, gently, gently. <laughs> not fish. No fish will ever do that. <laughs> you know, how a fish gets a bait, you know, a big bait, big I was going to have a big bite. You'll kill the man. If he died by the fish, it's not a miracle. It's not a miracle. If he didn't die, it's a miracle. Heat and suffocation in the whale's belly. Three days and three nights, he ought to die. He ought to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. But he's alive. Third day vomitors. He goes into the sea alive. He comes out alive. Nowhere does he say he died in between and he was resurrected. Nowhere, nowhere that he died and was resurrected. He's alive, 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 alive. And what did Jesus say? He said, for as Jonah was, so shall the Son of Man be. The miracle of Jonah is that he's alive three times over when we expect him to be dead. When we expect the man to be dead, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. Jesus, he said, my miracle is the miracle of Jonah. Now, I'm asking the Christians that Jonah was alive for three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Everybody's agreed. And I'm asking the Christian that Jesus, for the same period of time, was he dead or was he alive? According to your church, according to your church, according to the one, one billion and five hundred million Christians, according to you and me, Jonah was alive for three days and three nights, and Jesus for three days and three nights, was he dead or was he alive? Dead! He was dead for three days and three nights. I'm asking the Englishman. Please, sir, tell me in your language. Jonah is alive, Jesus is dead. Is that like Jonah or unlike Jonah in your language? No, 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 this is your language. Look, you people taught me English. The Britisher, the Britisher, he conquered my country, India. He ruled my country, India, for 150 years. And you people taught me English. You people taught me English. So, I'm asking the Englishman, in your language, is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. No, thank you. No, thank you, my brother. It's unlike Jonah. So, if he's unlike Jonah, then either he was bluffing the people. No, no, it's Jesus. He is telling he will be like Jonah, and you are telling that he was unlike Jonah. So either he was lying, bluffing, deceiving the people, or you have misunderstood. One of the two. Either he was lying, he was bluffing his way through, or you have misunderstood. Now, the clever Christian tells us that you see, this miracle of Jonah, Jesus wasn't talking about dead or alive. He was talking about the time factor. Look, listen. Jesus says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the way, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. He uses the word three, four times to emphasize is a time, time, time. This is the important thing, the miracle. I said, what is miraculous about the time factor? The miracle is when you expect a person to die and if he doesn't die, that's a miracle. Time, whether you are in prison for three days or three weeks or three months and you come out alive, so what? That's not a miracle. The miracle is when you expect a man to be dead and he's alive. That's a miracle. But he said, no, no, no. Drowning man clutches at straws and drowning women also do the same. Something to hold on to, clutching straws. So he says, a time factor. I said, all right, let's examine that. Did he fulfill that? He said, yes. 
how again bankrupt i'm telling you i am talking from experience therefore i'm talking as come let's have a dialogue your bishops and popes his holiness the pope i said let's have a dialogue is a long story is another story another lecture about dialogue between me and the pope is another story but i said come let's talk now your bishops and your archbishops come talk talk to me argue and debate with me let the people listen and let them make up their minds where truth lies so is the time factor so i'm asking when was he crucified good friday good friday so friday what makes good friday good it is because that christ died for our sins when friday right yes friday that's what makes good friday good i said when was it in the morning or the afternoon so the clever man tells me it was in the afternoon it was about 3 o'clock that he was put on the cross and no man is expected to die within 3 hours on the cross it was supposed to be a slow excruciating death that was a purpose not for killing a man mm-hmm. they wanted somebody to die slowly the, the guy is lingering on and on 3 days 4 days 5 days times history records up to 6 days the guy would be alive on the cross it was to be a slow lingering death that was the purpose of crucifixion but they say he died okay so before evening they brought it down and the bible tells us the jews gave him a jurial jewish burial bath no. all right let's not go into details so by the time they brought it the body down hurry 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 they were in a hurry to put him up now in the bible is, and they were in a hurry to bring him down because of the sabbath because on friday at sunset it is the sabbath yawm sabt it's the night comes first then the day islam in islam night and day ramadan starts see the moon night ramadan first night you see the moon ramadan start you see the moon stop fasting same thing to the jews at sunset the day changes not the westerner told midnight damn it all you wait till midnight to see the day is changing but that's your system that's your system told midnight you say now is 1 one, 1 am 1 am in the morning <laughs> so right so they brought the body down and they put the body into the grave into the sepulcher sepulcher not a grave so friday night he supposed to be in the grave saturday morning the bible doesn't say when he came out saturday morning he still supposed to be in the grave watch my fingers no tricks of the hand in the side of the hand the, the guy in the circus you know is clowning and he's doing this and that and you know he's deceiving you with his movements of his fingers mm-hmm. no watch watch here watch mine friday night he supposed to be in the grave saturday day he still supposed to be in the grave saturday night he still supposed to be in the grave sunday morning the first day of the week when mary magdalene goes to the tomb the tomb is empty this is exactly i'm reading your bible word for word verse for verse friday night he is supposed to be in the grave saturday day he is supposed to be in the grave saturday night he is still supposed to be in the grave sunday morning the first day of the week sunday morning not monday sunday morning the first day of the week when mary magdalene goes to the tomb the tomb is empty so i'm asking how many days and how many nights come come look look it's so very simple well by god no if your eyes are not you're not short sighted <laughs> you can see how many nights and how many days huh two nights in a day look friday night saturday day saturday night sunday morning he is not there two nights in a day what did he say for as jonah was 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of the whale so shall the son of man be 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of the earth he said 3 and 3 3 and 3 what we see is 2 and 1 i want to know from you christians whether this 2 and 1 and 3 and 3 is the same 